If you go to any social media right now, I promise you will find developers screaming at each other about CSS. On one side you have the purists. They believe in the sanctity of semantic HTML, the separation of concerns and the cascading nature of style sheets. On the other side you have the pragmatists, the tailwind cult. They believe that naming classes is a waste of time and that CSS is better when it looks like a crossword puzzle that exploded in your HTML. But arguments are cheap and code is real, so to actually understand the difference, I built the exact same project with both. We are recreating the Google Dark Mode homepage. And at first sight it looks simple. A logo, a search bar, a footer, but it's actually a perfect stress test for layout systems, theming and component architecture. We aren't doing a winner takes it all battle today. But we are going to dissect the experience of building this. We will look at the setup, the mental models, the ugly parts of the code and finally a file size comparison that actually shocked me. By the end you will know exactly why you should pick one over the other. Let's get into it. So let's start with the setup. This is where the first philosophical divide happens. With vanilla CSS, the stack is non-existent. You create a file, you link it, you write code, there is zero friction. You are writing the language the browser actually understands. Tailwind, however, brings the baggage. You need Node.js, you're initializing a config file, you're setting up a build process to watch your files. So for a simple HTML page like this, Tailwind feels like bringing a construction crane to build a Lego set. But, and this is a big but once that crane is set up, the speed changes. In vanilla CSS, you are working in a global scope. The cascade is powerful, but it's also dangerous. If I define a generic button class, it affects every button on the site. But Tailwind doesn't rely on the cascade, it relies on a system. And that system starts with configuration. But before we draw a single pixel, we have to talk about the reset. This is step 0, and it catches almost everyone off guard. In standard CSS, the browser uses a default box model, where adding padding increases the width of the element. So if you have a 100 pixel box and add 20 pixels of padding, it becomes 140 pixels wide. It makes layout math a nightmare. So in my vanilla CSS version, the very first thing I have to do is manually tell the browser, stop trying to help me. Borderbox ensures that if I say a box is 100 pixels, it stays 100 pixels even if I stuff it with padding. But in Tailwind, I didn't write a single line of reset code. Why? Because Tailwind injects a system called pre-flight automatically. It flattens the browser styles, applies border box globally and removes all default margins. It gives you a truly blank canvas. In vanilla CSS you have to build that canvas yourself. Now let's talk about theming. We need to match Google's specific dark mode grace. In my vanilla CSS build I use CSS variables. This is clean. It's dynamic. If I change BG primary to red in the DevTools, the whole site updates instantly. But there are no guardrails. As a developer, I can easily break the design system, so the CSS file allows me to be sloppy. In Tailwind, I have to be more disciplined. I open tailwind.config.js and extend the theme. This config file acts as a contract. When I go to my HTML, IntelliSense kicks in. If I type BG Goo, it suggests BG Google BG. It prevents magic numbers. You aren't just painting pixels, you are referencing a system. So for large teams, this is the difference between a consistent UI and a messy one. Now let's look at the actual layout code. This is where we see the concept of context switching. In vanilla CSS I have this markup that reads a little bit like English. But as a developer I don't know what nav right does. Is it a grid? Is it absolute positioning? To find out I have to switch to style.css and find the class. Ok, so this is Flexbox. We are aligning the items along the cross axis. In vanilla CSS, the structure and your layout logic CSS are physically separated. You have to hold the connection in your head. Now look at Tailwind. I admit it looks kind of noisy. Have a look at Gap 4. In the old days of CSS, spacing items was hard. We used margin right on everything except the last child. Tailwind exposes the modern CSS Gap property as a utility. Gap 4 puts one RAM of space between every child. I can visualize exactly how this component behaves just by reading the class string. This is locality of behavior. I'm styling the element while I build it. Now I hear the backend developer screaming at the screen, but what if I have a button? Do I have to copy paste? BG Blue 500 hex white rounded px4 py2 on every single button that violates dry principles. I hear you. Now this is the Google search buttons. We have two of them. In my Tailwind HTML, yes, it looks repetitive. If I want to change the padding on both, I have to add it two places. And 
this sucks. A Tailwind has a solution for this called Add Apply. If you really want to clean this up, you can go to your input CSS file and do this. Now, in your HTML, you just use class button Google. So you can use classes in Tailwind, but usually you shouldn't. In modern web development, like with React, Vue, Svelte, you wouldn't make a CSS class. You would make a component. For example, you would make a button component that holds these styles internally. Therefore, Tailwind works best when paired with a component framework and not just raw HTML. Now let's get technical. The search bar is the most complex component because it has specific pixel dimensions and hover states. In CSS, I handle the hover state using a pseudo class. This relies on specificity. The browser calculates that this rule is more specific than the base rule, so it applies it. In Tailwind, we do this in line, and this is where we see a feature called arbitrary values. Look at this class. And this one. Tailwind haters love to point at this and say, see, that's ugly. And yeah, it is ugly, but it's also incredibly powerful. I needed a 46 pixel height to match the Google reference. I didn't have to create a new class or add an inline style attribute. I just told the Tailwind just in time compiler, hey, um, make this class for 46 pixels. And it did. I didn't have to worry about specificity wars or overriding other styles. It just works. Now speaking of the compiler, let's get under the hood. How does Tailwind actually work? When I type a class like height of 46 pixels for a search bar, what is happening? Well, Tailwind is not a static CSS file. It is a program written in JavaScript. So when you save your HTML file, the Tailwind just-in-time compiler scans your code. It then uses regular expressions to look for class names. And in our case, it sees the h-46 pixels in the square brackets. It parses that string, realizes you want a height of 46 pixels, and generates a CSS rule on the fly. And this is also why you can leave your CSS file empty. The compiler is writing the CSS for you based on what you asked for in the HTML. It also handles specificity for you. But in vanilla CSS, you have an ID in the class and they can fight. In Tailwind, because everything is a utility class, everything has the same weight. So you rarely run into those moments where you write a style and nothing changes because some hidden rule is overriding it. Okay, so now we have two identical looking websites. But what are we shipping to the user? We always hear that Tailwind is small. So I ran the build and here are the results. Wait. The optimized tool is 300% larger? Yes, and here's the nuance. Tailwind 16 kilobytes includes that pre-flight reset we talked about in chapter 2. It's a reset sheet that normalizes all the browser quirks so your site looks the same on Chrome and Safari. And that's a base cost. Vanilla CSS, on the other hand, is pay for what you use. I only wrote the lines I needed, so it's tiny. However, this is a single page. If I added 50 more pages to this app, the vanilla CSS file would grow linearly. Every new page means new classes, but the Tailwind file would flatten out. It would behave logarithmically over each new added page. Why? Because I'm reusing flex, item center, and text white everywhere. So while vanilla wins the sprint, Tailwind wins the marathon. So which one should you choose? Well, if you're a beginner, look me in the eyes. Do not start with Tailwind. You need to feel the pain of the box model. You need to understand how Flexbox axes work. You need to understand position relative versus position absolute. So if you jump straight to Tailwind, you're learning a framework and not the web. But if you're building a real product, a dashboard or working on a team, then Tailwind CSS has won me over. The ugliness of the HTML is a small price to pay for the development speed. It allows you to come back to a project six months later and know exactly what is happening without hunting through a 6000 line style sheet. And if you want to see me compare React vs Svelte or something else entirely, then let me know in the comments. And don't forget to cursor pointer that like button. I'll see you in the next one.